Yes, I'd do it all again Sir, I wouldn't change a thing All these years I thought that I had lived But I hadn't And now I've got the best of friends These are the best times of our lives Picking tunes and getting all right, before we get started on the video today, take a look at this tree. Now, based off the bark, if you know what kind of tree that is, then leave me a comment down below. If you're not sure, then just give me your best guess. I live in Northeast Tennessee and we got a lot of different species of trees around here, so it could be about anything. And uh, second thing is, if I can get 500 likes on this video, 500, the next week we'll take that tree down and then we'll put it on the sawmill and see what we can get out of it. 500, hit the like button. If I don't get 500, I'll probably still do it anyways, but that'd give me a little bit of an incentive to get going here, 500. Well, I'm back out here today working on the siding here for the kiln, and it's a really nice day here in Tennessee. It's about 61 right now. One of the warmest days we've had in a while. But I'm going to go over a few questions I had on the last video and uh, go over a few things. I didn't really specify a lot of my dimensions and what kind of uh, wood I'm using here, like I probably should have, and I've got a few questions, so we're going to answer those first before we start putting on our batten strips. Right here's our batten strips, which will cover the crack on the boards. And this is red oak one by sixes. And I saw these a few weeks ago down on another farm for a customer of mine. We just split the lumber that came off of it. And a lot of times I do that. I'm gonna do a video pretty soon just focused on the financial part and the business part of sawmilling. But uh, I got this lumber because we saw it on halves and that means he has the timber and I bring the sawmill and we split 50-50 after I'm done for the day on all the lumber that's sawed. So we'll talk about more about that later, but that's what I'm referring to when I say sawing on halves. But I had a few questions I want to address here before we get going on these batten strips and uh, give you guys a little bit better understanding of why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. Now James asked me about some nails that I was using, whether or not they were uh, rust resistant, and they are. The screws I'm using are coated up rust resistant decking screws you just see at Lowe's they're powder coated I think they use powder coating on those things if you put a regular old nail into oak and it's not a it's not a, a coated nail or galvanized or anything like that just regular metal well two things are going to happen that nail is going to rust over time and just look terrible and on top of that your wood will be discolored around that metal it's just like metal in a tree it's just like a log when you have metal in it. When you look on the end of a log and you see a black stain, that usually means there's metal somewhere in that tree. And I do the same thing for these boards cause they're green. Now, if they were kiln dried or air dried, you put that nail through it and they're not gonna show any kind of staining at all. But do these boards being very wet, it's gonna show that every time. Another concern that I saw in the comments was how I'm attaching these boards. I'm using two screws here on the board at uh, four different places to hold them down. I suggested using one nail or one screw in the middle so the wood will be free to move because it is drying. So the way you want to think about things when you work at this green wood, you have to account for the movement. And this is why I'm using two screws and not one. 99% of this wood is quarter sawn. I got the luxury of having my own sawmill, of course, and when you go out and you start getting materials for something you're building, you can kind of decide what kind of wood you're going to have. So I quarter sawed most of this oak on purpose even though it's a highly valuable piece of wood, I'm using it for siding, but I've got so much red oak around here and on that farm that it really doesn't matter because I've got plenty of it. So why not use it for its best need, which is my siding here. So when you think about it, it's quarter sawn. We've talked about quarter sawn on this channel a lot of times. And these are one by sixes. They're not gonna move a whole lot because they're one by sixes to begin with. Now, if this was board and batten siding with 10 or 12 inch wide boards, then you would really have to think about the wood moving a whole lot than you would if these are one by sixes. Now, if these were flat sawn with two screws in them, just being a one by six, I'd feel comfortable just doing two screws and being okay with it. I, I don't think it's gonna move as, enough to cause me any issues. I don't think the screws would pop off or the wood's gonna crack being one by sixes. But these are quarter sawn one by sixes. They're not flat sawn or plain sawn. So we're in really good shape here because with a quarter sawn board, 
the width is not going to change hardly any at all, if any. The thickness will change just a little, but the width won't change much at all. And the reason I've done that was is because I wanted these boards to be as tight as possible. And that also dictates the width of my batten strips. Because I don't have to account for a lot of wood movement. I don't have to worry about these cracks opening up very much at all, just based on what you see right here. I can use very small batten strips and I don't have to worry later on about the opening overcoming the width of this strip and, and being able to see through the sides of it. Now, if this was flat saw material, it's gonna move a whole lot on the width, like I said before, and I'll be using a lot wider batten strip to cover up that gap because it will open a whole lot more than this will. But this is quarter sawn, it's not gonna move much at all. And uh, if this was, even if this was a one by 12 or one by tens, if I had a quarter sawed it, I'd still attach it with two or three screws because the width is not going to change much at all, trust me. It is not going to change. The thickness will, the width, very little if any. All right, let's talk about our batten strips here that we're going to be attaching today. These are little store-bought pine strips that you get at Lowe's. They're really inexpensive, and people might want to know why I didn't uh, saw my own batten strips. Well, I'm not a big fan of sawing very, very narrow strips of wood on the wood miser. I just don't like doing it because you got to account for stress and sometimes there's a crown in there and it just it's hard to get a good uniform strip or it has been for me with my experiences in saw and maybe you had better luck than I have. But I bought these and I buy them in bundles. This is also the same wood that I use for stickers between my lumber for air drying. So these are real inexpensive. Like I say, they're kiln dried, they're pine. And later on in a few months when springtime kicks in and this stuff is air dried down to about 15%, it's all gonna get painted anyway. So it's not gonna matter that we're gonna have pine battens on red oak boards. So that's not gonna matter either. So what I'm gonna be doing here today is attaching these batten strips to the center. Now when I attach these strips here to the siding, I'm gonna do my best to get the nail directly in the middle of this batten. And I'm using three inch nails. And what I'm trying to achieve is a nail that would go between this crack here and not touch either board. And it will attach these battens directly to the OSB. Now when you think about these batten strips, the number one thing they're doing is, is covering up this gap. So when the wood shrinks or moves and regular flat saw material, the gap is always covered. It looks really good. And another function they do is they keep these boards flat. Now, I don't have to worry about that as much. Like I said before, the thickness on these boards will change just a little, but they're not going to cup or bow in any way. They're quarter sawn. They're very stable and being screwed down as well. They're, they're not going to move, so I'm not really worried about that. But if these boards were flat sawn or rift sawn or anything like that other than quarter sawn, they would want to warp and bow on you and cup as they dried while hanging on this building. And something else you gotta think about, if they are sawn that way, you can't use two screws. You can just use one in the middle because you have to allow that wood to move on its own. So these batten strips serve that function as well. With, like I said, with flat sawn or rift sawn material, these batten strips will cover up that gap and they'll also aid in keeping that board nice and flat. The other question I had, and I just got this question today before I come out here and start doing this video, was on this horizontal strip that's running down the side of the kiln. And the reason this is here, it's just a stopping point. The batten strip will come down and rest right there, then it will continue on the bottom here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I had to have a break in here somewhere because these strips are eight feet long. And like I said, this is about a 10 foot long uh, high building here on the sides. So I was not able to get any batten strips for the full length. I, I would rather have had a full length batten strip. I think it would look better in the long run. Another thing I need to install, but I don't know if I'll get to it today, is a seal on the very bottom of the boards running horizontally. And uh, we'll be using white oak for that because white oak is extremely rot resistant. I've already got that sawed up as well. But we might get to that today, I'm not sure, but we'll at least start putting these batten strips on and give you guys an idea of what this is going to look like when it's finished.
last night I could not sleep I thought about what you said to me How memories are hollow scenes Planting paper window dreams And now I know just what that means Most things don't last and love can leave and if we hold on to these memories Well these are going on pretty good, they're just kind of slow and meticulous And my first one here, we we'll want to redo it It busted on the very top And I had to use a little bit smaller nail on the second one And that's going to remedy the problem I believe I'm running out of daylight here so we'll come back tomorrow it's Supposed to be up in the 60s again tomorrow And we'll finish this wall And I'll also get the white oak out and put her seal on the bottom and uh, talk about that a little bit and see how the wall looks when it's finished. I think it's gonna look pretty good. And don't forget to give me your best guess on that tree that we showed at the first of the video and hit that like button. 500 likes and we'll take it down next week.